Three races to go. And I don't know if you believe this or not. 16 drivers can win the Formula E Season 5 Championship. And today, we're going to break down all 16. How likely or not it is they're going to win the championship. Who is in the fight? We've got lots to get through. So let's start then with Alex Sims. The BMW driver went into this season a rookie. Question marks on whether he was up to the standard of Formula E. And in a team that straight away, the first race of the season picked up a victory, should have won in the second race. It was looking so, so rosy for Alex Sims. But he is a whopping 87 points off the championship lead, which, to be honest with you, I don't think he's in contention whatsoever. But feasibly, if everyone in front DNFs, he could win the championship. It's been a dodgy season for Sims. Luck hasn't gone his way. I'll put my hands up to that. It's been a shaky season. Question marks on whether he'll stay next year. But Alex Sims, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to win the championship. Moving on then to a bigger name in the world of motorsport. A big transfer for Formula E, a big transfer for HWA Race Lab, a new team, but also a rookie, Stoffel Van Dorn, currently sits on 30 points, 72 points off the championship lead. Again, a little bit more feasible than Sims, but still, that's a hell of a swing in form Van Dorn's going to need to get anywhere close to this title. A podium in Rome is his best result of the season by quite a margin, However, his pace in Rome, his pace in Monaco, and his pace in Berlin are promising. And whilst I don't think he's going to be in the run in this season, I, th I think that's pretty obvious to see, next year, when Mercedes fully come on board as a Mercedes factory team, he could be in with a shot. And it's been a solid year for Van Dorn, just hasn't quite produced the riches he probably would have liked. Another huge transfer for Formula E. Perhaps the most high-profile driver ever to be in Formula E, Felipe Massa. 32 points he is sitting on, 70 away from the championship lead. A little bit like Van Dorn, it's not quite been the season he would have liked, he would have expected. In a team, I suppose in a similar sort of situation to HWA, started the season off pretty much the back markers but slowly as the season has progressed they've got more and more used to the car itself the gen 2 car we've seen this year which again still looks sexy as day one it really does the venturi car has won a race this year eduardo mortara who's not too far in front of felipe massa in terms of points won back in hong kong massa himself picked up a podium in monaco which was awesome to see Again, a little bit like Van Dorn and a little bit like a lot of drivers up and down the field this season. It's been that, I suppose, inconsistency would be the word you would use. That's just held them back a little bit this year. So again, I think Massa's too far this year out of contention. But if Venturi continue the trend they're on, maybe next year could be a little bit more of a chance. Another high-profile name joining Formula E this year. Missed out round one. DNF'd in the first lap on round two. Pascal Verlein. 52 points. Just 50 away from the championship lead. And when I say just 50, I think this guy could be... Well, have an outsider chance of maybe getting it. Might sound crazy, but hear me out. There's 87 points... In total, that can be won over these three races. So he's going to have to have the form of his life. However, 13th in the championship. If he bosses next weekend in Switzerland, gets the victory, which he will need to do to be in this championship fight, that sets him up really nicely for the last two rounds in qualifying to not be in Group 1, to benefit in qualifying and potentially... Get some big points. So I think Verline could be a dark horse. But again, like Master and Van Dorm, inconsistencies. Had that pole position in Mexico. Pole position in France. That was taken away. Race, almost race winning Chile. 
almost race win in Mexico. It's not quite gone the way for Van Dorn this year. Mortara, just ahead of Van Dorn, also 50 points away, but is ahead because of that win. I've not been super impressed with Mortara this season. That win he got was almost half of his points. It's 25 points for a win in Formula E, the same as Formula 1. But it, again, there's been signs of pace there for Mortara, but there's also been mistakes. Qualifying hasn't been his strong suit. I think against Massa, they've been fairly matched for most of the season, but considering Mortara's relative experience, a season under his bag already in Formula E, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more growth from the Swiss driver. Three more rounds this year. I don't think he'll be up there in the championship, but anything is possible. Sam Bird, another one like Verline, is nicely placed in the championship, where even if he does super well in Switzerland, he'll be in a nice position in qualifying for New York because of how the qualifying system works, and there's videos on the channel that explains that a little bit more, which potentially could place him nicely to maybe get a surprise championship win. Again, he's going to need a big weekend in Switzerland, which he has not had for a long time. Bird, at one point, looked almost dead on to be in this championship fight, and now it's quite a distance. It really is quite a distance. Got that win, early doors, back in Santiago, Chile. One in Hong Kong, but it was stripped away from him thanks to a penalty because of contact with Lotterer. And since then, his luck has got worse and worse. Hasn't stepped on the podium since. His teammate has picked up a win in the meantime. Bird, like Verline, it's going to be a bit of an uphill struggle, but possible for sure. Buemi, P10, picked up his first podium for Nissan last time out in Berlin. One podium this season. One podium last season. He hasn't actually won since season three, which is crazy to think. This guy has the most race wins of anyone. And I know a lot of you didn't watch Formula E back in the day, but let me tell you, this guy at one point was unstoppable. And if he wasn't winning the race, it was a surprise. It really was. He's really lost his form. And the Nissan car this year has been pretty good in qualifying trim. It just doesn't have the efficiency in the race. Potentially, they could turn it around in this championship. Ollie Rowland, his teammate, is just in front of him in the championship. And I think for both guys, the strategy is going to be the same. Just try and maximise Switzerland as best you can, but not so much that you get into Group 1 quali. And then again, maybe they could sneak it. The pace has been there in the car. Look at Paris. 1-2 on the grid. Both didn't end up finishing. That is not good enough for a team like Nissan. That, yes, are in their first season. Ollie Rowland was called up at the last minute. Didn't even do winter testing. I think Rowland's been the more impressive of the two this year. But again, that consistency for Nissan hasn't quite been there this year. But I'm okay with that. Like HWA, it's their first year. It's a learning year. And I think next year, Nissan really are going to be a big force in Formula E. So it's been a solid season for them. Just for the championship, maybe a step too far. But maybe that's where Boemi's experience will really triumph over some of these other guys and push him forward. But I'm not expecting either of those two guys to be up there in New York. Jerome D'Ambrosio. What an interesting season this guy's had. Has actually led the championship for most of the rounds. I think it was up to Rome... He was leading the championship or was fluctuating there, thereabouts. However, think about this. 40 of his points, so 40 of his 65, were in the first two races. Third in Saudi Arabia, got the victory in Marrakesh, hasn't stepped on the podium since and has generally in qualifying been at the back of the grid because of that early form. Being in Group 1, generally... It, it puts you further down the grid because you're at a disadvantage in qualifying. He's had some really strong recovery races as Jerome D'Ambrosio. And he's been a guy that I've underestimated for quite some time in Formula E. So again, a little bit like Bird, a little bit like Verline, could sneak it just through a bit of consistency in these last three races. Could sneak it because he won't be in Group 1 
for Swiss for the Swiss E Prix, and could sneak it if he's not in Group One for New York. Again, it's annoying. It really is annoying, and we'll talk about this well after the season ends. Qualifying this year has really messed up the championship. But that being said, there's other guys like this guy, Daniel Apt, also Jerome D'Ambrosio, also Mitch Evans that we'll talk about in a minute, that have been super, super consistent. Daniel Apt, I believe, has not scored points on two occasions this year. And again, he, he's not been as flashy as his teammate, Lucas Degrassi, who's picked up two victories. Apt hasn't picked up a single victory this year. However, two podiums is a really strong strong season, I would say, for Apt. And while some would say his seat is up in a little bit of question, a little bit of doubt for next year, I don't think so. I think he's been a really good number two driver. Again, not quite as flashy as with his results as Lucas Degrassi, his teammate, is. However, I would rate Daniel Apt really highly this year in terms of his consistency. Always picking up points. The team know what they're going to get from him. And he's picked up that old podium. Mitch Evans, the other one who's been super consistent, had scored in every single race up to that victory in Rome. Since Rome, in the three races after, he scored once. It's almost... It's so bizarre, the pace of the Jaguar this year. I don't see Evans clinching the title. We go to Switzerland, where he picked up his first pole position last year it's a different circuit in Switzerland this year I'll put my hands up to that however that's where they really had a, a bit of burst of pace at the end of last season so maybe the same thing could happen this year but it's not been plain sailing for Jaguar this season whatsoever Alex Lynn last time out in Berlin maybe could have sneaked a big chunk of points but had a powertrain issue so ending up DNFing I just question now Jaguar haven't been in Formula E since day one. Came in in season three. Still hasn't quite shown the performance I think the team would have expected now in their third season of Formula E. They lost PK Jr. halfway through the season. Evans, like Apt, super, super consistent. But I just question if they've got that killer instinct, especially the Jaguar car, to be able to push them over the line. Up into the top five now and arguably... These are the ones that are going to be in the championship fight. However, the top five, all in Group 1 qualifying. So all of them will be at a big disadvantage going into qualifying. So that's definitely something I've been banging on about today. But also something to bear in mind. Robin Frines started the season off a little bit hesitantly. However, skipped Season 4. Was not in Formula E Season 4. Has been in Formula E in the past. However, came in. Teammate Sam Bird, Sam Bird, an incredible start to the year. However, second half of the season, that has flipped around. Robin Frines picking up his first Formula E victory in France a couple of races ago. Apart from that, it's been a little bit of a nothing key year. However, like Evans, like Apps, they're still there sniffing about in the championship through their consistency. Got a second place back in Marrakesh. Again, Consistency has been key for Robin Frines. Does he have the car, however, to get him over the line, to give him a championship? I'm not too sure. Virgin, it seems to be a focusing more on next year now than this year's car, but it's been a really strong start to his Virgin career. The top four drivers, however, I think are probably the favourites to get it, starting with the BMW man, the guy who won the first race of the season should have won the second, Antonio Felix da Costa. And what a season he has had. Okay, some would say the BMW is the best car. Some would also argue that if he'd have won that second round of the season, that would have been a huge chunk of points and he would be currently leading the standings. However, what this guy has been able to do on weekends where he hasn't had the best car, he's had issues... Take Mexico, for example, was almost guaranteed a sixth place, made contact with, I believe, Sebastian Buemi through the race. However, through the consistency of his drive that day, ended up second. Again, okay, that was helped by other drivers as well, making mistakes. But the maturity of a BMW team this season, considering technically it's their first year, has been great. De Costa as a team leader 
has been great. It's his first chance in Formula E. He's had a chance to really prove himself in a top team, and I think he's done a really good job. I've said throughout the season, he is my favourite for the championship, and I don't think that changes, to be honest with you. You look at guys ahead, which we all know are the Tutor Cheetah cars and the Audi of Lucas de Grassi. I think those two cars, the Cheetah and the Audi, have been inconsistent at times. So I think the car to go with perhaps will be the BMW in these final few rounds. But it's all going to be down to how the car suits the Swiss circuit and more importantly, the New York circuit where we'll get two races, double the points at that weekend. That's what happened last year. The Tachita, which Lotterer and Vern drives, last season reigned supreme in New York. And Sam Bird last year in the Virgin, that car was terrible in New York. Ended up getting no points, losing the championship. And that's what this championship, I believe, is going to come down to. New York, what car is going to be the best? This Tachita is the car in form. Andre Lotterer in third place. I don't know how he hasn't won a race this season. Honestly, this guy has improved so, so much from last year. It's unreal. Lotterer was a rookie last season. And it's fair to say, was a little bit aggressive. Perhaps too aggressive. Showed his... Well, showed the fact that he was a rookie. His inexperience. This season, I actually don't think a lot of people would think he's in his second year of Formula E. He's been super mature was so unlucky not to get the win in Hong Kong, was so unlucky not to get the win in Rome, got his first pole position in Rome, but Mitch Evans made that really sneaky move and took the victory on that day. However, Lotterer has been one of the more consistent drivers in the entire field. That's why he's up there in the championship. Would be crazy to think, though, he might win the championship without winning a single race. Such is the close nature of Formula E this year. However, now we're into the big guns. P2 at the moment, Lucas de Grassi. 96 points, just six points away from John eric Verne. The two of them have had two wins this season, the only two drivers to do so, which, to be honest with you, if you're coming into this video, being a bit of a casual fan this year with Formula E, you know, not really watching every race or watching it in the background, first of all, that's fine. I'm cool with that, but... Two wins is the maximum wins anyone's had this year, which is which is crazy. Degrassi, however, to be honest with you, before last time out in Berlin, taking his second win, and apart from Mexico, it's been a little bit of a, a dull season for him. You know, two wins, that's, that's 50 points. So <laughs> he's only got 46 in the remaining other races, which, again, it, it's proving how close and difficult Formula E has been this year. Degrassi arguably could have been on the podium in Monaco, but contact with, I believe, Andre Lotterer, could be wrong, a little bit of a melee down into turn three, cost him points there. And that's been the story of the majority of driver's seasons, including this man, jean eric Verne. 102 points, two wins, but again, at the beginning of this season, Verne was nowhere. The first four rounds, he wasn't... I don't think he's been in Group 1 for over half of the season, which is crazy to think. However, this Tachita car, which in the first race of the season should have won, in the second race of the season, went off the block. Just vanished in terms of pace. It's a car which I think a lot of people would tell you is the best car on the grid. I don't think that's fully fair. It's not the best at qualifying. I don't think necessarily it's the most balanced car through the corners. However, what the Tachita and the Audi cars both share is brilliant energy efficiency, which means drivers like Verne, like Degrassi with experience, top quality Formula E drivers are being able to exploit this season to perhaps recover from a difficult qualifying. Look at Berlin, P8 in qualifying for Verne, converts it into a podium finish. Only your top drivers are going to be able to do that. So, going into the last three rounds, who do I think has got it? Well, you'd say Verne is the favourite. However, is qualifying going to be the downfall 
of these top five drivers. 102 points is a mighty tally. However, do not count any of this top 16. If we've learned anything from Formula E this year, is that it is so unpredictable, it's unreal. Let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to win. If I was going to put money on it, I've said it all season. Antonio Felix da Costa for me, I just think it's his time in Formula E. And don't forget, we've had a different winner, different champion every single year in Formula E. Will that streak continue? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Apologies if it was a little bit echoey today. That might be an issue. There's been lots of dramas going on at the moment here. So I, I will put my hands up and say sorry for that. I, I can't really help it. But anyway, thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the race this weekend and I'll see you in the next one.